So, how to prepare a recording session with musicians? There is quite a bit to know about it, so I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know as I welcome you back to the Toman Studio and Recording channel. My name is Claudio, I am a lifelong music producer, keyboard player, and I run these beautiful studios here in central London called Dr. Mix. On this channel, I explain everything about recording, music production, mixing. If you're interested in those subjects, then I strongly recommend that you subscribe to this channel, hit on that subscribe button and also that bell notification so that you don't miss out. Let's dive into it. So in my time as a music producer, I have recorded a lot of records. I have produced a lot of sessions, sometimes with many musicians. I think the maximum that I've done was probably 25 musicians. Uh, I mean, produced by me, right? So that is a lot of responsibility, as you can imagine. But that doesn't mean that for a smaller session, you don't need to plan ahead. And trust me, the secret here, the difference between a good session and a bad session is all about planning ahead. I will start with stage plot. Now, a stage plot is a document that you should produce every time you are planning on recording musicians, especially if multiple musicians in the same session. So let me show you. In these two folders, I've got two sessions that I've done uh, in the past. This is from, uh, I think, about 10 years ago, and this is from about three years ago. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna dive into the stage plot, right? See, this is a layout of the room, okay? This is, uh, you know, you just need to use a little bit of time to measure it and know pretty much how the room looks so that you can plan correctly. And, and then I basically put all of the musicians. Here are the horn section. In this case, I had six uh, horns, if I remember correctly. Here I got my bass, drums, percussion, another percussion, all the vocalists, a vibraphone here, and then my keyboard set, okay? So what this allows you to do is to have a vision, literally, of where every musician will go. Now, of course, these are uh, quite a few <laughs> musicians, but even if you have just bass, drums, and a singer, you will still need a stage plot. I have done this one probably in um, Photoshop, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, you may want to use also Illustrator, which is quite good, and it's maybe faster. And um, yeah, all you need to know is that based on the measurements of your room, you want to place the musicians in a way that they tend not to in interfere with each other, if possible. These lines that you see here, these are panels, all right, that uh, basically act as a shield for, for the sound so that you minimize the amount of sound that is spilled back into the microphones, all right? So, a stage plot like that not only makes things clearer right from the beginning, but it also gives you an idea of where you can place your microphones and where you can place your uh, mic stands and all of that, because you need to make sure that you have enough room. If you want to go into detail, and I, you know, personally I like to go into detail, let me show you my keyboard stage plot, right? So this is just for my keyboard sets, where I show what keyboards I'm gonna use. Clearly here I've got a Rhodes, here I've got a little synthesizer, here I've got a Minimog, here I've got my effects section, and on this table here on the left, a mixer and a couple of controllers, all right? So um, this immediately gives you an overview of how many outputs I am going to have. I'm gonna have Minimog, Rhodes, Reface, Chaos Pad, so, so you know that pretty much you have seven instruments to take care of. Which leads me to the next type of document for this occasion, and that is the channel list. Let me show you, I've opened my channel list here, okay? So a channel list means essentially where do you plan on uh, putting your microphones, your direct boxes, the eyes, and, um, and your um, synthesizers or whatever uh, signal you have going into your recording. 
So as you can see here, I've got on the left side, here and here, I've got my number of channels. What is this? Just the number of inputs that you've got going into your DAW. Like for example, here I had a big Pro Tools system, so I decided in advance what channel was going to be used for what. So on channel one, I clearly have the kick drum, I have the microphone. So in this case, I had a choice of a U47 or a D12. On channel number two, I've got my snare drum and I've used on that occasion a Nautix uh, i5, I believe, on the Tom's Sennheiser MD421. Why do you want to go this deep with your channel list? Because number one, you will be able to assign the microphone that you have right from the get-go. So you know where every microphone goes, because I take it you're gonna have a few microphones at your disposal and you're gonna have on the other hand a certain number of channel and a certain number of instruments so you want to make sure that you match up all of these entries so that when you go to the session there are no questions to be asked everyone knows where everything is and also when you open up your session you know where everything has been placed right so this is this is quite extensive um, another type of channel list is, you know, a simpler one like this. And uh, on this occasion I had 56 channels, yeah? And uh, I went, so this is a click and it was coming out of my computer and it goes into a DI box, all right? So, um, and, uh, and of course these are all my synthesizers, as you can see, and here I got uh, sax for example this was an RE20 and um, on channel, channel 17 the reason why you want to be this prepared for any recording session with musicians is because time is money right if you have hired a studio or if you are hiring musicians you know those musicians have a fee and that studio has a fee so the time that you use to figure out um, uh, your channel list in the studio will cost you money right and uh, that's why you should plan it in advance so that you already from the get-go you know where everything needs to be placed. So obviously there is no such a thing as too much detail when you are planning for a recording session with musicians. And as a last thing for this video, I'm going to show you my stage plot for the Dream Gig, a gig that I have done here in London, and uh, it's quite detailed. Look, look. See, not only do I have the stage here, but I also have the entire club. I know where everything is and the reason why this is is because not only I have several musicians on stage, right? I also have all of the cameras because that's what you need to do if you are filming, right? So um, I am doing this on, um, on uh, what is this, Illustrator and that allows me to move things around, you know, just... Uh, you know, it's magic. I love this stuff. This is how I like to roll because I don't like surprises. Too many times it has happened that uh, something wasn't planned for. We needed one more microphone. We needed one more uh, uh, keyboard stand or we needed one more mic stand. And uh, you don't really want to waste any time when everyone is ready to record and you're ready to hit that record button. So in other words, the secret here is plan ahead. Don't be afraid, it's fun and it's gonna save you a lot of time, money and headache. If you have any questions about this specific subject, you're more than welcome to ask them in the comment section here below. I will try to answer them. In the meantime, I wish you a fantastic day, a day full of inspiration and great music. See you later.